Hello there, this is Rupesh and you are watching CPPNet's video series on C++ and in this video we will see what is function overloading and what is function override. Okay, so let's start with function overloading. In order to tell that two functions are overloaded, their name should be equal. Okay, but the parameter should be different like this is taking integer and this is taking double, right? So we can say these two functions are overloaded. And if you will call print with 5, this 5 is an integer value. So this function will be called. And if you will call the same function name with a floating point numbers, then this function will call. Okay. So let's check that quickly. If I'll compile this, it is telling integer function 5 and double function 5.5. So first we are calling this one print 5. In that case, it is calling integer 1. and for the second case it is calling this double one okay so let's talk about this little move so let's suppose you want to call the same print function with some character like a and let's create the function for that so that would look like character a and we are just printing that care function and the value a okay so let's compile this we will see that it is calling character function which is printing a and after the integer 5 and double 5.5 so this is how this binding happens and this binding is called a compile time binding or a static binding or early binding and why it is called binding you can see that this is bound with this one okay and this one is bound with this one but their name are same, right? So how they are bonding? They are bonding with the help of parameters. And one more thing, you can do something like this. If you are having one print function with one integer value, let me clear this. And there is another print function with two integer values, then also that is overloaded. Okay, something like this. Integer A, comma, integer B. Okay then also it is overloaded because it will come to know that okay there are two values for this function so if you want to call with i suppose five and another print with one and two one comma two then in that case this function will be bonding with this one and this later one will bond with this one okay but here is very one very important point to note that function overloading work with the parameters like these things okay not the return type okay so it is not like you are keeping this one and like print a and print i in that case both are taking one integer value in this case there is a ambiguity okay let's check that if we'll compile this this will give so many errors Okay, so these are the errors. I don't want to see that because I know there is an error and that error is telling that dude, I am compiler and I am really confused in this case whether I should call this one or this one because both are taking integer values. And if you will change this parameter, let's suppose you want to return something from here. Okay, in that case, this is a problem. Why? Because it is not the return type which is considered in function overloading it's the parameter what we are passing in. okay either you have to change the number of parameters you are taking or you change the parameter itself but this return type will not affect anything okay so if i will compile this it will again tell me the same error okay ambiguity new declaration of integer so it is an ambiguous call compiler is confused okay even if it is integer and void here got it so that was the restriction on function overloading and yeah in order to overload the function these two functions should be in the same scope and i know most of the guys know what is scope but still i'll tell scope means the boundary okay so this print and this print both are in this boundary this is starting curly braces and this is end curly braces so these two are in one boundary these two functions are also in global scope okay 
but function overloading will not work if both are at different scope okay so we have studied function overloading and yeah one more thing is left how compiler achieve this how compiler will know that i am supposed to call this function over this function or vice versa actually what it does it changes the name see you have written like this right so what it will do it will add some dummy name to this name like print 01 here it is print 02 and in first case let's suppose you are taking an integer and second case you are taking character here okay so it's like you are taking character and let's remove this return and let's keep it void okay so in this case if you are calling it with a here then as you can see this is going to get bound with this one so print 0 2 will be replaced i'm telling you guys this is going to happen and i mean this is what happens when your compiler compile the code and this technique is called name mangling so this was all about function overloading let's go to function overriding here so this is the example for function overriding so we have a base class we have a derived class we have inherited base into derived and both are happen to have the similar name functions like print is there in base and print is there in derived so what will happen in what case let's see that so first of all we will talk about why would you give the same name function if it is already there in base because inheritance tells that okay i am derived and i want base functionalities and base property okay that's why i am inheriting it so if that is the case if you are getting everything from here to here except constructors and few more thing but this function will come here okay but still you are giving that function again the reason behind that is sometime what happens you are taking that functionality from base into derived but you know what you have your own definition for that particular operation and in that case this print is one operation and you might be willing to give the definition of this print differently than it is given in the base okay so what you will do you will write your own print function and this will get the opportunity to override this function okay so to simplify this let's assume like if you are inheriting base into derived then what compiler does compiler will copy this one here inside derived okay for simplicity please think like that but if you already got the definition which is the same print function then compiler won't do that okay and why you would write the same function i have already told you maybe you want to give a different definition for the same function okay and if you want to see the example for that there is a very simple example let me write that code so this is the code for that let's assume you are having one class as person okay and you are inheriting that class into a man class and a woman class and there is a function in person like print name but a man has its own name okay and woman has its own name so if you will call print name on man object then it will print its own name okay and if that is the case with woman she will print her own name okay so this is the example i have taken here so let's just compile this see first it is printing person sandhya and rupesh okay so in this case what you did you are inheriting person in man and woman and you are overriding print name by giving your own method okay and in order to achieve this your function name should be equal and parameters should be equal okay and in function overloading case your function overloaded because of the parameters here but in this case your return type will also matter here return type whatever you did doesn't matter the overloading was happening on the basis of this one 
okay parameters what parameters are being passed but in overriding it will take return type also into the consideration okay now wait a minute there is a very important point i need to discuss here and that point is we all know how dynamic polymorphism work okay and this is the code for that if you have a parent class pointer and let's suppose you are initializing it with the child class this man is a child class and now if you will print print name what name it will print now this is the different case than the previous one previous one p was holding p object okay but in this case this is a person pointer which is holding man object okay so in that case what will happen is it going to print this one or this one i know it will be printing this one only why because this is a static binding okay this is early binding so what it will see okay this pointer p is of person type so print name will come from person it won't check what is the object there inside this p okay otherwise it would have given this print name okay so let's compile that if you will compile there is some error i guess write man m and we can initialize the address of that okay now compiling it will print person as we expected okay so how to get rid of this i mean even though pointer p is pointing to the man object but it is still printing its own function i mean it is still calling its own function not m function okay logically it should call m function because if you will call like print name here on m then it will call its own function which is this print name okay so let's compile that see it is calling rupesh in person so here this one is calling the correct function but in this case it is not calling the correct one and the reason is we are not using a virtual keyword here if you will virtual keyword here then comes the runtime polymorphism and this call will be resolved at runtime okay so it will check okay i am a pointer of person but i'm holding object of m okay so i should call this function not this function so let's check that quickly see in both the cases it is calling rupesh okay and there is a new keyword in c++ to verify whether you are really overriding something or not okay and that is how i write code because sometime what happens you think okay i have overridden this function into my function but you did a small mistake like you are not keeping the return type similar like integer then it won't be override okay or you wanted to give print name as this one instead of that you give print name but you miss that e here and that is very much possible and you was thinking okay i am happily overriding it and see you compile the code and it is compiled and it is running so you will be thinking that my code is running but why am i getting parents function call in this case even if i have used virtual here see virtual okay but still i am getting parent i should be getting child right so for that case only this override keyword is there so if you will write override then it will check is there any function with print name in its parent class no it is not so it will tell that you are overriding but i am not overriding anything so let's compile this here so see it is telling that mark with override but doesn't override anything okay so this was all about function overloading and overriding if you have any concerns please comment we will discuss there thanks for watching